Hey, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. So I am so excited to be doing this video, but it's also crazy to me that I'm doing this video. If you are new, my name is Autumn. I have two little girls, Alani, who is five, and Emmy, who is three. So I have been prepping and prepping and prepping for Alani's first grade year, and that is what is crazy to me because it was really wild getting everything together for kindergarten, and that seemed like such a big step but first grade, it's the first year that I actually have to do anything with the district that I live in and actually follow the state laws, all of that kind of stuff. So this is a big deal. This is a big year for us and I'm so excited, but also I can't believe we're here already. Before I jump into this video, I would love to hear what state you are living in. If you are currently homeschooling, what state you are homeschooling in. I am in Pennsylvania. It's one of the quote unquote stricter states. I haven't actually done anything with the state yet and I have heard that it can really vary district by district, but I am about to find out this year how my district is. To make things a little bit easier on my brain, since I have a lot of subjects that I do have to follow with the state of Pennsylvania, I made one of these for both Alani and Emmy, but obviously Alani is is more thorough because there's so much that I do have to do, so many requirements. But I have front and back all of the subject areas that I have to focus on. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about English or language arts, as I would say, but arithmetic, science, geography, Spanish. Well, Spanish I added in. We don't have to do a language, but I am going to be doing Spanish. Art, music, history of the U.S., history of Pennsylvania, civics, safety education, health, and PE. So I am going to go through all of the things that we are using to make sure we are hitting everything that we need to hit within the state of Pennsylvania. And I have some things that I still have to print, still have to prep. That is stuff that I am saving for like when Alani is in camp and I have time for those types of things. So I'm gonna let you know what I am using, but I do not have everything fully printed and ready to go for next year. If you do, that is amazing, but that is not where I am. I am a visual person. I need to see something. So this is really helpful for me. I have the curriculum, the program, what subject it aligns with, the days of the actual curriculum or program. So we have only been doing homeschool four days a week. I plan to do that again next year. So even if we do things four days a week, I just put down how many days the actual curriculum is set up for. So some things are set up for five, some things are set up for two, that kind of stuff. And the units or domains or modules or lessons, depending on what it is. And in the last column, I just put in additional resources that I know I'm going to pull from or I think I'm going to be pulling from. If you've been here before, then you know that we were using pinwheels for kindergarten. We didn't start with it, but we ended up picking it up. So we are not done this. We probably would have been done this had we started with it, but we are actually on level two. So year one has a level one and a level two when you purchase it. And we are on level two and when we are done the school year, I'm just referring to my paper, when we're done the school year, there's only going to be six units left in this. So that is, as I get closer to that time, probably even just over the summer, I'm going to have to decide if I want to purchase level three and four in pinwheels or if I want to move on to Logic of English. I'm not sure which one I want to do at this point. We really do like pinwheels and I do have everything set up for level one and level two. That's probably what possibly I'll use with Emmy. I don't even know. But what I have to decide is when we move on from this, am I gonna stick with this or am I gonna move on to Logic of English? So that is just something I haven't decided yet but I will definitely let you guys know when I do. Though pinwheels is a language arts curriculum, I am also going to be using core knowledge language arts. If you're not familiar with core knowledge, it is completely free and it is standards aligned if that is something you are interested in. I plan to homeschool for as long as we wanna homeschool, but I understand that there might be a point where my girls want to be in a traditional school building or maybe I need them to, for some reason things change in our family, who knows? But I would like to make sure that I am still 
hitting certain standards so that if we do get to that point, it's not as difficult of a transition. I looked through core knowledge for all of their subjects and they really do look great, but I decided just to do language arts this year see how we feel about it and we'll move on from there if there's anything else that we decide to pick up over the years. But for their language arts what I really liked is because it's cross-curricular there are other subject areas that it is pulling from. Core Knowledge doesn't necessarily call it units, they call it domains. So the different domains that we will be tackling this school year are fables and stories, the human body, different lands, similar stories, early world civilizations, early American civilizations, astronomy, the history of the earth, animals and habitats, fairy tales, a new nation, American independence, as well as frontier explorers. So as you can see, there's some science in there, there's some history in there, geography, all of those things are going to be touched on just within this language arts program. And then on top of that, we are still doing geography and we are still doing history. This language arts program does have a skills section of it. The skills section actually aligns a lot with what I like about some of the phonics programs that I have used. So if you do like logic of English or you're looking into something like pinwheels, I would say check out the skills section of core knowledge ahead of purchasing something because that's completely free and that might actually satisfy what you're looking for. Now for the resources section, I'm going to be mostly pulling from our Dash into Learning books as well as Explode the Code. These are something that we're still working on loving, but Alani really loves Explode the Code. So I think that we will continue using both of these for first grade. For math, we are sticking with Eureka Math. I really loved it for this school year, and I know it's gonna be even better for the first grade school year. Now, they have actually announced that they are going to be having their digital lessons on Zern. So Zern is a completely free online resource that aligns with Eureka Math. And there were activities that Alani could do and enjoy doing on Zern, but it was limited at the kindergarten level. Whereas now, even for kindergarten, they are gonna have digital lessons on Zern, which I think is phenomenal. I'm gonna be so excited when Emmy starts kindergarten and there are the digital lessons on Zern. But that is something that they already had for first grade. They just have a lot more to pull from. So I'm really looking forward to having that extra support through Zern. We were already doing lessons on YouTube to help. There's someone who, and I'll link their account, there's someone who has recorded tons of lessons and we use that for the kindergarten year. But I'm excited to just have one platform to be able to use for all of that stuff. So between Zern and all of the math games that we have purchased, we're just gonna be having a good old time. If you saw my curriculum unboxing video, then you already know that we are using Sunlight Level A and that I did not purchase the books that go with it. I plan to get those books or similar books through our library and I feel like that is going to be fine for us. My additional resources that I'm considering for that are Generation Genius. I have not decided if I feel like actually purchasing that or not, but that is one of the options. And definitely just our local museums, libraries, all of that kind of stuff. We live fairly close to Philadelphia. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get in depending on where we are going. So I really do think that with Emmy being three and a half at that point and Alani being six, we'll have a lot easier time getting into the city and exploring the different museums. And again, when I get to the point of organizing the curriculum, I will take you guys through a deeper look of everything that we are using. For geography, we will still be using Torchlight. If you're new on my channel, I use Torchlight or I am using Torchlight for Alani's kindergarten year but I decided to, instead of doing one week units, we've been spreading them over two weeks. So instead of getting to all 36 units, we're only going to get to 18 of them. And then we will do 18 next year as well. So I've been loving Torchlight. Even Emmy <laughs> loves it. She's just beside us learning sometimes. And at this point, she knows all her continents as well. So it's just really fun watching them explore 
the different places around the world and just learning so many things with them. I was an international studies major and still as we're doing this stuff, I'm like, oh wow, I never knew that or that's really fascinating. So it's really cool to just learn beside them. Obviously there's no way to just learn it all and I feel like that's the hardest thing because even with spreading things out over two weeks, I just want to dive deeper. <laughs> but again, she's only in kindergarten. We have many years to dive a little deeper in some of these countries. Epic has really been a great resource as we've used Torchlight. Many times I get books from the library, but I like to sprinkle in some of the books on Epic as well. And Epic also has videos that can go along with some of the things we are learning. Also for this, we are gonna really take advantage of the museums. Again, very fortunate to be near so many. So that is something that we will take advantage of more. All right, next on my list is our foreign language, which is gonna be Spanish. As I said, not required in my state, but we are going to be doing this together as a family. I'm not waiting for us to start the next year. I'm just waiting for things to kind of just calm down a little bit for us before we start doing this as a family. We will be doing this as a family, my husband as well. So I'm really excited for us to all start this together. And I showed everything that was in the box we received for Homeschool Languages Spanish in my curriculum unboxing video. So if you miss that, make sure to check the description. I will have that linked. When it comes to art, I love that my girls are learning about different artists from around the world and that is really great, but I also want them to understand the elements of art. So I found a really cool curriculum on Teachers Pay Teachers called Science in Art. And one of the things I love is that is focused on the elements of art. So again, haven't printed out everything, but I did print out these basically posters. So like they'll be learning about line, and shape, color, as well as value. They're going to be learning about forms and textures, and then they will also be learning about space. So I just think it's really cool that they're gonna be learning the actual elements of art that was really important to me, and they're gonna be doing it in a fun way because it is relating to the science that Alani is already going to be learning. So it's not just, oh, you're gonna learn this in science and it only applies to science, or oh, you're gonna learn this in math and it only applies to math. I really appreciate when I can help her to understand that these things are connected in so many ways. So there are nine units within this and it's broken up into life science in art, earth and space science in art, as well as physical science in art. So again, I'm super excited to jump into this and really make sure that I am relating it to what we are learning in other subjects. I feel like I've been talking forever, but I'm just now flipping to the other side of this. So next is music. And for me, that's actually the tough one right now. I haven't fully decided. I was looking at Hoffman Academy since that's online. It does recommend two of the classes a week or more and we do not have a piano or keyboard in our home. We would have to go to my grandmother's house for Alani to practice. So that's why I'm kind of up in the air. I'm not exactly sure if we'll do that or if we will opt for lessons of some sort, but that is kind of where we are at this point. I want her to get an instrument in her hand. So there's also the possibility of maybe grabbing a recorder and doing something without school. So there are lots of different options there. That's the only one I'm not exactly positive. I've looked at tons of different things. And that's another one where it's great learning about the different composers around the world and we're having fun doing that. But I do also want her to get her hands on an instrument and be using it. Something that I found online that I think we might use just randomly at some point during the year is this teacher's guide for Peter and the Wolf. I found it, it was completely free. I will link it below, but it has the activities, it has the Spotify playlist to use, everything, all of that information. So I'm excited for that. And I think both of the girls will really enjoy this. And it is very detailed with scripts if you need them. So I think this is great for anyone, even if you don't really have a music background at all. The next one is History of the United States. And as I said, 
core knowledge, language arts has that cross curricular connection. So I am going to be using that for our history of the United States portion. And we are very fortunate to live very close to Philadelphia. So there is tons of information when it comes to the history of the United States very close to us. For history of Pennsylvania, I have a guide as well as this book. We got this book a while ago, but it does have the pages of the different states. So we could definitely reference the Pennsylvania page in this and that would be helpful, especially because I also printed this guide. This was free online and I printed this guide to Pennsylvania and in it, when it comes to like important people, all of these people are, except for two, all of these people are white males. So I definitely found some more diversity in this book as well as I'll find more things online. And then I also wrote the information on here because I wanna make sure we make it to the Museum of Indian Culture, which isn't very far from us either because I don't want her just getting one version or one side of the history in Pennsylvania. So this will be another thing where we're really using a lot of local places and museums as additional resources. And then we're probably gonna try to visit the State Museum of Pennsylvania since we are definitely close to Philly, but we're also not very far from Harrisburg. One of the teaching requirements is civics. So for that, it was super easy. I just went on to Core Knowledge. I, again, Core Knowledge has really been helpful, but I went onto their website and within their social studies curriculum. So I'm not using their social studies curriculum, but one of their domains is lessons in civics. So free, printed it off. This is what we are going to be using to address the civics requirement. And I've also seen there are a ton of resources through PBS Kids. So I'm gonna be able to access that online or on the TV for us to further any understanding of civics. Safety education is another thing that I have to make sure I address. That is something that we kind of touch on day to day. So just in our general lives, but we're also walking distance to our local fire station. And there's also a free museum in Philadelphia where we can deepen our fire safety knowledge. I actually went onto their website and printed out a teacher's guide. So I have that information as well. And teachers pay teachers, I can generally find like the fun cut and paste activities. So that is my plan for addressing safety education. Obviously not just fire safety, but we will be addressing lots of safety scenarios. The last thing to talk about is health and PE. So again, core knowledge, we are going to within language arts be discussing the human body, but I also have a really great book that I have to grab. This book, we used it over the summer last year, but there are so many fun activities in this book. Alani actually has it bookmarked for one that she just wants to randomly do because it's just really cool. A really great way to approach learning about the human body. It's called Human Body Learning Lab and we really enjoy this book. So this is something that we are going to be using as we learn about the human body. And on top of that, when it comes to PE, I mean, it's easy enough to just go to the playground, but Alani's also in rock climbing. She's doing gymnastics. I'm not sure if she'll do soccer again, but we definitely stay active. So I really don't have too many concerns about that. That is it. That is all of the stuff, well, most of the stuff we'll be using for first grade. Obviously, we'll have all of the manipulatives and I'll find things along the way, but these are the big things. So this was so much fun. I actually really enjoyed finding all these things and putting it all together. And thank you to people who comment and make recommendations. We did kindergarten and we're gonna be going into first grade. Obviously, I did the TOT school and I have my teaching certification, but homeschool is not the same. So I really do appreciate all of you and your help. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure to leave them below. And if you're looking for any links, make sure to check the description. As always, thank you so much for your support of my channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye.